it's me again and this is going to be basically how to care for a baker fish. I'm going to do a series on it and today's um, lesson for all you guys is the tank. But firstly I want to make an update on, on the algumin I used. I used tetra algumin and I got rid of lots of algae on my pants. All I need to do now is scrub them off with my hand and the algae will be gone. Literally there's like nearly no algae on the glass. You can see some odd spots but not much. And water is relatively crystal clear. So that is really good. I want to make an update on new growth in my plant. This cryptocorn on the Kitty Petchy right here has grown two new leaves since my last video and this one has grown one new leaf which is a great achievement. The anacharis is turning a little bit yellow at the bottom which means I will need to trim it but that is because light can't penetrate all the way to the bottom of the trap or bottom, bottom of the tank because most of the top of the anacharis is blocking the da the bottom of the plant so that's pretty bad but yeah the java fern has developed some spikes which i'm pretty sure are used to make new plants but i can't be sure and they just look ugly so i remove them please tell me if i'm not supposed to um this combobda Cambodia, I don't really know how you say it, but it has just risen. Fortunately, this one has no roots, and sometimes on my plants, the roots grow in the middle of the plant. So I was planning to cut some of the plant off, but then the roots came off, so that's pretty shame. My temperature is at 25 degrees C, and if I look at my conversion chart, which is pretty stupid, um, it's 77. The actual is 25.5, so it's 78 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect. Anyway, let's get on to how to take care of some beta fish on tank size. Your tank should be at least 5 gallons. Um, this is because beta fish are very active fish, and they do like to have space, and they do like to explore. I know lots of people have them in 1 or 2.5 or 4 or less than five gallon tanks because they don't because they think they don't produce much ammonia but they do need some space to move around and it does look kind of dull in a bowl or a more than five gallon tank. Um, it's, so it's very important to have at least five gallons. If you don't know how much litres that is, it is approximately twenty litres. I have a fifteen gallon tank which is approximately sixty litres. Um, so that's really good. My beta fish will live, uh, will live here happily, I hope. I'm going to quarantine my fish and suck on my fish tank. And there are lots of things to do with your fish tank. Um, so basically, you want to make the tank more than 5 gallons. It's best if you have a 10 gallon or higher tank. If you do have a more than 5 gallon tank, then you may want to consider upgrading. I know some of you will disagree with that, but I strongly suggest that. Um, your beta fish should have a filter adequate for your tank. On the back of this tank, I have a Marina Slim S15, which does the job. Again, I'll do a video dedicated to the filter later, possibly tomorrow. And sand or gravel is a must. Billions of good bacteria such as Nitobacter and Nitostomonas and Nitospira settle on the substrate and that acts as a natural filter in the wild so it's vital to have substrate. At least about two inches should be enough if you can but some people, but of course it's better if you have three inches. I'll just have two inches for the sake of it. Um, so yeah, so that's tank size done. You want to make the tank have lots of decorations so they can hide in plants, they can feel at home. Basically I've even got an Indian almond leaf 
for the beta fish and they do like leaves that float on the top because they, they like to build bubble nests under them which are used for beta fish breeding and they also like to sleep under them which may sound weird but they do do that in the wild so don't ask me why and next thing we're going to talk about is water chemistry the chemistry of water should have zero nitrite zero nit well possibly zero nitrate but it can be anywhere from zero to twenty five ppm of nitrate but and zero ammonia that should happen if you have about a ten gallon tank with one beta fish and you change twenty five to fifty percent water change weekly of course I'm gonna have that in my tank because I'm only gonna have one beta fish in a fifty litre tank which means it's gonna be a spoiled little guy but you know that's just me I'm sorry for any shaking us by the way. So raw chemistry, you can test the raw chemistry with a test kit. Right now I'm going to tell you my, record, my recordations. I'm just going to keep the camera there. Let's get started. My ammonia is at 5 to 6 ppm. The reason being is because I'm stuck in my tank. But it should become zero. I'm waiting for, basically what I'm doing is waiting for it to become 5, then 0, then waiting it to become 5, then 0. So I know my bacteria can process 10 ppm of ammonia. I know of lots of beneficial bacteria already because I used to keep fish in the tank before. But I just want to make sure they can process it. My nitrate is 50 ppm. As I said, I didn't do any water changes before. I had fish before and it didn't do much water changes and it was a nightmare, seriously. But I'm going to get rid of that by water change. My nitrate is 0 0.5 ppm. My nitrate is 0 0.5 ppm. Again, I'm going to remove all my water changes. My GH, 125 to 250 ppm. I'm not exactly sure if that's and okay for beta fish. My KH is 100 ppm, which is perfect for four beta fish. My pH is 6.87.2, which again is perfect for beta fish. Now everything's perfect except the nitrite, nitrate and the ammonia, but that's of course from fragment it with a product which is called ammonia. These days you can get house of ammonia. But it's a very important to circle your aquarium. Basically what I've told you is I'm going to wait till it gets to 5 ppm, then wait till it gets to 0, 5 ppm, 0, then I'm going to test the nitrite, when that gets to 0 I'm going to do a 50% water change and I'm ready to add my fish. And then you can test water every other week, but if you have only have a very lightly stocked aquarium like me who has one beta fish, you probably don't need to be testing a lot you don't need to be testing weekly i know some people do that's good but i only have test trips and they can only do 25 tests which is a bummer but i don't really need anymore you need a heater because they need to digest their food in the wild and in any tank if you have a cold water tank and you put goldfish and beta fish together then the beta fish will relatively die because they need to have warm water to live because that's what helps them digest their food. So that's very important to have a heater to keep the temperature between, let's say, 75 to 82 degrees, which is perfect temperature. Right now, mine is 78 degrees, which is perfect. I'm fine with that. Um, you can convert that into Celsius with a calculator. I don't mind. But that's really good. And make sure that your food has low phosphate. My food is Kari Bio Gold, my sister Fina and Bloodworms, which are all actually low in phosphate, so I do not need to worry about that. But right now, I hope you like watching this video. The also, I want to say that beta fish do have a lot of personality and they love to have a big tank. And please provide lots of hiding spaces for your beta fish. Um, make sure you have a substrate and adequate filter for your tank size and even some decor like that rainbow is nice for the beta fish well if, when I say nice that's 
I mean, relaxing, even though they don't find it in the wild. And of course, you should always have a water conditioner to dechlorinate, remove ammonia, and to detoxify chloramine from your tap water, which is a must. No matter what, you must have that. Um, I'm sorry if this video is quite long, but it was supposed to be very long because it is a beta care video. My next beta care video will probably be food. Um, then I'm, I don't think I'm going to talk about cycling because I have talked about cycling in this video and how I'm testing my aquarium. By the way, I'm using a product called Biomature. Sorry, here. Yeah. Um, and I'll show you my other products for my dechlorinator. I use AquaSafe and Nutrient Aqua Plus. Also, if you have plants, you want a liquid fertilizer. And in the substrate, you want probably it's okay to have some kind of, let's say, plant substrate, or you can have root tablets. CO2 is very necessary for plants because there is also some amount of CO2 dissolved in water but CO2 is optional for very easy plants like jazz fern and anubias and my plants in this tank are easy every month if you if you need to you should cut your plants um so yeah thank you for watching i hope i've also included some information about plant care at the end but obviously i'll make a video about plant care later and yeah so thanks for watching my next video i'm not really sure what my next video is going to be so i guess you'll have to wait out and a big shout out to nani one of five proper life videos another person I actually forgot, but I'll be sure to put it her in the description. And Mist of Knowledge, because they've all subscribed to me. And I also want to give a big thanks to Boy with Fish Tank, because he has actually replied to a comment to me, and he's going to check my channel. Um, please, please share this video, like this video, comment this video, and please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.